Hi, I'm Frick Weber, author of The Field on the Edge of the Woods and Earthlings, and this is Comic Book Storytellers. On this episode, we're going to talk a little more about working in the business, and here's some of the best advice guys have gotten, people who've worked at Marvel, DC, Aspen, Dark Horse, Image, and even Bongo Comics, and also talk to some independent guys, and one guy in particular who's kind of making the blueprint for independent comic success, Terry Moore, with his series Strangers in Paradise and Echo. And also want to thank uh, Mind Over Media, my day job, for allowing me to do this and the resources. And then also my digital publisher, Cloud9 Comics, for footing the bill and allowing us to do this and kind of give it to you for free. So, enjoy. Best advice I've been given by somebody in the industry. Um, Whew. Oh my goodness, that's a, that's a tough one. If I had a really good piece of advice, it definitely came from Paul Jenkins. He was really a, a mentor to me uh, starting out. Use reference, thanks to Neil Adams, yes. A number of different uh, professionals. Learn your craft well, and uh, if you're an artist, study from life. Your artistic style is your interpretation of reality, and if you learn from another artist, you're simply learning that person's interpretation of reality. Best piece of advice, uh, just, to, just to keep at it, you know, don't, don't get frustrated. Draw every day, practice every day, be true to yourself. It's really easy, artists are, you know, they, they do a bad drawing and they just throw their hands up and walk away, but you kind of just got to get, get back back at the drawing board and just keep, keep doing it. There's probably some really practical advice um, that I'm not, I'm not thinking of right now. Something like, you know, uh, make sure you drink pr plenty of water before you go to bed after drinking at the con all night. <laughs> well, the same advice I try to give to everybody. Um, draw because you love to draw. And always remember that you're trying to tell a story first and foremost. Don't be so mesmerized by the glitz of your own work that you forget to tell a story. You know, don't, don't, don't just go for the wow moment. Go for the, oh my gosh, it's progressing. The story <laughs> progresses. The second the writer has to explain what's going on in the artwork, you failed. Jimmy Palmiotti, George Perez, and Michael Turner, because before I got in, Palmiotti was the only one that actually helped steer my portfolio in a direction that was presentable that editors would like. After I got in, Mike nurtured me and he kept me from making mistakes, doing you no know, miscellaneous projects that would get me bogged down as a fill-in guy or, or this guy or that guy. Rich Buckler was one of the first, but then I you know, studied the work of Jack Kirby, John Romita, who was the art director at Marvel Comics at the time, and a lot of it was because I happened to love movies, and I started picking some of that up on my own, that one of my editors commented that they, they saw all the weaknesses in my artwork, but they said, but they, one thing that kept me uh, employed despite the weakness in my drawing was I knew how to instinctively tell a story visually. And that got me through uh, the, the weak moments of my artwork that I got to improve my artwork, but it was storytelling that they saw I seemed to be a very natural thing for me. That there is a lot of talented people out there, but there's a lot of uh, untalented people too. <laughs> so the more you uh, just uh, work at it and uh, keep practicing and just keep it going, that's what I think uh, pays off. All art, whether it's comics or painting or, or theater or whatever you're doing, music, tenacity is the key. There's no room for people who aren't disciplined. There's no room for people who don't have uh, a three, five, and 10 year plan. It's a business, it's a profession. The best advice I ever got about being and staying in the industry came from a retailer who told me just keep doing your book. Just keep putting a book out on a regular basis because that's what we need. Uh, he said my store is open 52 weeks a year. Every single week I need new books. If you're one of those guys that's giving me a new book on a regular basis, I love you. If you're one of those guys that I don't know when your next thing is coming out, I don't have time for you. And it was the best advice I ever got that it's a business, that if you want to do this for a living, treat it like a business, treat it professionally. Guys like Tom DeFalco, working with him was great, working with guys like Ron. To be a professional in this business is kind of like a cornerstone that kind of moves you through um, good times and bad times. That's the one thing that tends to get lost because we, we tend to be stunted children in so many other ways that uh, sometimes that spills over into the professional arena and it can't. If you really want to work with others, you, you have to be able to, to work collaboratively, 
and you have to be able to uh, to make your deadlines and please your editors. I've had uh, peaks and valleys in my career, and one of the things I think that has kept me working and kept editors wanting to work with me is that the work that I do, but also professionalism as well. Meeting your deadlines, you know, returning editors' phone calls, all that kind of stuff. You know, but it's no different from any other job. If I was in commercial art, you know, the, the editors and the uh, the readers are my client, and um, I have to satisfy them, or I'm not going to get more work. You know, just because you brush your teeth doesn't make you a dentist, and just because you draw a couple of doodles that make some of your drunken friends laugh doesn't make you, you know, Walt Disney. So the important thing is is to is to take it seriously, have a good time with it, and make sure you have a bank that's not going to go under, because if you're really good, you'll doodle all the way to the bank. Well, that's it. That's episode three. Thanks for watching. Episodes four and five coming soon. We'd love to hear what you think, so give us some feedback, comment on the videos, or you know, shoot us an email. You can find us three different ways on Facebook. Uh, we're also looking to do more, so if you like these, please share them with your friends and help us get the word out. I want to thank Phantom of the Attic in Oakland for allowing us to kind of come down here and shoot. And also want to thank uh, our sponsor, Cloud9 Comics, digital publisher. There's a ton of free downloads on their app and at their website, so please, if you get a chance, check them out. Thanks for watching. See you next episode.